Dell Tech. I mean, what can I say? Dell stock was over up over 30% yesterday, and Michael Dell uh, got put in the $100 billion uh, net worth uh, club. It is a good day to be at, at, at Dell. And here's the thing. It did not come from a big revenue boost because revenue was actually down year over year. It was a huge EPS beat. Uh, $2.20 versus $1.73 uh, revenue. They met uh, expectation of the slight beat. Uh, they did increase their dividend uh, by 20% uh, for, for the year. But more than anything, it was the affirmation of the impact from AI and the communication that they could have done uh, even, even more. They shipped 800 million in AI optimized servers in the quarter, and their backlog doubled uh, quarter over quarter to $2.9 billion, waiting on those pesky GPUs. Congratulations to everybody at Dell. You guys crushed it. You wake up and on a Saturday and you're worth 30% more than you were two days ago. That's got to be a, a good feeling. I had that feeling a few times when I was at AMD, but I don't directly trade in any of these stocks. So I haven't had that in a long time. Yeah, so, you know, great day for the company. Michael uh, joined the $100 billion club this uh, week on the growth. I mean, God, I, I think I shared, I shared um, when it was up 15% after hours, thinking what a pop, only to see, I could have been more provocative at a thousand or what, what was it? Sorry, at a 30% up just a little bit later. Pat, have you ever, I, I gotta say, it felt very 1999 to me. Like the internet's here and there's an infrastructure company and we're gonna, you know, like, listen, Dell's doing some really good things, but it does have a diversified business. It didn't actually grow on a revenue basis. I know. <laughs> and so, the excitement, the exuberance, people wanting another trade, maybe feeling another company that's going to benefit from this. And no question, Dell is going to be a very important company. You've got, you know, Dell also has, you know, they have the opportunity to be, you know, silicon diverse. They're going to be clearly partnering with AMD as AMD comes out with product. I think they will be, uh, of course, one of the biggest resellers of the hardware. You saw that GPU number, and the fact is, it was very easy to look at the order book and back out at the order book growth. Um, you know, margin as availability comes down, and Pat, there has to be an indicator, right? We've seen the H100 timeline from 11 months to three to four months, which is indicative of the fact that they are going to be able to shorten that cycle to to filling those orders. I totally don't believe it, by the way. I don't. I, believe it. I am not convinced, but I'm telling you, if I was trying to figure out why the exuberance came off these numbers. Remember, you know, good numbers against what they committed to the street. These were adjusted guidance. They beat on revenue. They always, 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 always figure out how to beat on profit. They skinnied the company this quarter. Again, not really a popular topic, but a real topic. Um, there were have been some substantial cost cuts. People love that though. I mean, look, Meta's stock exploded when the company showed that it was willing to do what it needed to do to, to beat earnings. Now, there's always the very human element. You and I have talked about this now twice on the show, and I don't want, I, I'm not addressing that, but I'm addressing the fact that why do investors get excited? Investors get excited when a company shows that can figure out how to perform even in a tough macro impact. Here's the other thing. They did what their peers didn't do. They beat. So even if it was an adjusted number, they beat. They beat yeah. the adjusted number on the top. While others couldn't beat a revenue number, even after a guy down, they were able to do that. So that matters. They were the best performer of their class against the expectations that were set. And Pat, they were able to show very prescriptive data on their AI. And so it, it, it's simple. And I mean, look, the, the profitability per unit on those GPUs can be calculated and tabulated, figured out. And as they move the units, and if they can move more units and move them faster, which is rumor, but there is some speculation that this, this cycle is being shortened and they can diversify across silicon. This AI hardware business can grow. I just don't know if this is going to be, you know, going back to the Benioff comments, is this margin rich enough that people can really stay excited about selling AI servers? I think the 
the complete set of Dell services and consumption-based private cloud, and by the way, selling into enterprises. All these servers are still, so much of it's cloud. So much of it's just going to the, you know, I know five, at, 10 companies that are buying. Look at Super Micro. Super Micro, I mean, they're, they are 100% box pushers, okay? That's all they do. And they're up 20-fold in, uh, in, in two years. Yeah. And 100% of what they do is slam infrastructure into cloud providers. Yeah. And interesting, uh, interesting exercise. Go, go do the five-year valuation, stock valuation of Dell, and look at its appreciation and then compare it to their contemporaries. Dell's up 370% in the past uh, uh, five years, and their competitors aren't nearly there. <laughs>